thank you so much, Scott and Marcel, for accepting our invite to this panel discussion about critical thinking, which is such a compelling movie about the story of a group of school children that defeated the odds both at chess and in life. Can you tell us about how did you get involved with the movie? How long ago did this journey begin for you, Scott? And then, of course, Marcel, you as the original member of the team, I would like to talk to you about the, the real story behind it. Uh, well, Marcel, maybe you should you can start first about when you were contacted because because I you were probably contacted mm, maybe just before I got involved. So maybe you can you can start it off and then I'll jump in. Uh, sure. Um, well, I mean, I, I I was born in Cuba and I got to the U.S. Uh, when I was 17 years old, uh, still needing to complete two years of high school. Um, obviously, I was playing chess uh, since I was seven or eight years old uh, with fairly decent results back in Cuba. And uh, when I got to the U.S., I jumped into the first uh, scholastic tournament that was available. Um, I won all my games. I mean, the level of competition at the local level wasn't very high. So, you know, the coach from the school started noticing um, you know, and he wanted to recruit me to go to the school, Miami Jackson Senior High, where I eventually graduated from. And uh, to make the story short, we started winning every tournament available up to the national level. Uh, we had a little bit of success in the news, local news and newspapers. Uh, so I guess the story got out and, um, you know, kids from inner city school uh, winning uh, chess tournaments, uh, so it's a little bit, uh, you know, not seen every day. And, uh, you know, we got contacted, um, uh, Scott Rosenfeld, Carla Berkowitz, uh, you know, m main uh, executive producers, um, um, you know, contacted us about getting the rights to the story. And uh, I mean, maybe maybe uh, Scott can take it from there. So you know, pretty. Yeah, I I heard about it uh, through somebody in Miami who uh, brought me to Carla Berkowitz, who who ultimately was the executive producer on the movie, and uh, she had she had heard about the story and was talking to the guys and Mario Martinez, the coach, about tying up their rights. Uh, I had actually started thinking about developing a story on my own that was more of a fictional version of this. And basically, Carla and I, after a little bit of discussion, decided to start working together and make one movie, which made more sense than trying to compete and maybe make you know two separate movies. So we joined forces uh, back then, and the guys were you know finishing high school; they were going into college and. Um, you know, and there was uh, an investor who came into the project from the Miami area. Uh, but it took a long and winding road. It was, uh, you know, it was difficult to get the proper script and the right writer. And, um, you know, people move on. I went on to do other projects to work through the years. But we all, you know, we stayed in touch. And then about three, four years ago, uh, we got back in touch because I started thinking about doing my my project again the original project I had developed and I call and I got in touch with John who's a uh, who I got to know who's involved in another project of mine and he I sent it to him and he said he loved it he wanted to do it and play a coach playing a chess coach would be amazing so I I called Carla and I said hey I, we haven't talked in two or three years but you know I just wanted to let you know we're gonna go ahead and make uh, move ahead with our movie <laughs> and not the same movie, the old movie that I was going to do. And, and, he, and she said, who with? And I said, John Leguizamo is going to play the coach and he's going to direct, you know, I want him to direct the movie. Uh, was, you know, I really pushed John to direct. And she said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do <laughs> I said, well, what do you want to do? And then we kind of got back together again. It was like a couple that had been apart for 15 years that decided to reconnect. And we, uh, you know, we threw in together again. There was a, you know, we had a lot we had to, uh, we had to take care of business-wise. But, but after a couple of years, John got involved 
And, you know, the money came together through a, an investor in Miami that, that uh, was Carla's partner. And we, you know, after many years of, of, you know, not making the movie, which often happens in the film business, it was finally like, look, guys, you either let's make this or let's not make it. But let's not mess around anymore. This is a great project. It's perfect timing. You know, an inner city movie about kids excelling at something using their brains instead of, you know, guns and all that stuff. It's perfect. And, you know, let's do it. So we did, you know, so, you know, the movie, we, we, we together at this point, you know, we've been, I, I'd been staying in touch with the guys, but, you know, now and then, but then when I reconnected with Marcel and his guys and, uh, you know, was a little discovered. They didn't look the same as they did 18 years <laughs> earlier. But, you know, neither but for did some I. of the differences, Scott. But yeah, we all, I mean, it was really nice. It was actually, you know, because it was sort of a little family was developing even back then. I mean, I, I got to know Mario very well. I stayed at his house. Um, so it was like reconnecting with everybody. And once we all got back together again, it was like, you know, we had never been apart. It was, and really it was, it was a wonderful experience to have Marcel and his guys along with the actors involved in the movie. It was very, very helpful. And it was just made it uh, special, made it very special. It does sound such an amazing project over two decades of work, if I counted correctly, uh, the yeah. years, uh, approximately 20 years of work going into the movie. Marcel, when you realize that this is actually happening from the initial talks, now it really is going to become a movie. How did it, how did it feel to you? What did you think of your story becoming so known, so famous? And uh, how was your participation in the filming? And what did you think you can help to the actors? It, it was it was definitely surreal. Like I mean, during the during the filming process, which uh, took about twenty eight days or so, we were still not believing uh, me or the other guys because uh, it's been so long that we kind of gave up on it uh, mentally. Uh, I mean, we knew there was something there that could attract uh, people, but uh, you just don't believe it until, like I said, even when it was getting filmed, I'm like, something's gonna happen and this is not gonna end. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we, we finally, um, you know, we took it to good furniture at the end. And, and you know, it was, it, was, it was a great process all along. It was a lot of fun meeting the actors uh, playing us and some of the, you know, the, like Leguizamo with such a, a good pedigree. Uh, I mean, as far as like acting in a lot of different movies with a lot of different actors. Um, you know, meeting the guys that were playing us, uh, I mean, the guy that played me uh, actually spent some time in my house going over how I move my eyes or my hands or when I <laughs> touch the pieces and this and that. So that was all an interesting process uh, all together. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Like, I, I still don't believe that my name is in a Hollywood movie. So, I mean... I try not to say that too loud because people still don't believe it. The ones that know me knows that, you know, nah, nah, you're just messing with me. Uh, but when they see it, then they, you know, so it, it's actually helped me in my business uh, also because people never see that side of me. So, I mean, whatever comes out of that, I mean, it's a story that you could tell people and, you know, it, it also brought me uh, together with a lot of old time friends that obviously I hadn't been playing for a long time. So they saw it and they got reacquainted with the story. And, uh, you know, a lot of words of um, uh, encouragement uh, have come from that. So all, all together, very, very happy. The team of work, like, you know, like Scott was saying, it was, uh, I mean, we known each other since we had hair, uh, like, you know, it's, so that, that's been quite a, a bit of time. Um, you know, not, nothing but good things to say. It's been amazing, an amazing experience. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, and really John breathed tremendous life and passion into the project when he got involved. You know, he, he wanted to make a real chess movie. He wasn't, you know, a, a knowledgeable chess person, actually, but he learned a lot. And uh, he wanted to make sure the chess itself was real. You know, uh -huh. Chess, you know, could be boring in a movie. It's probably been said many times, like, how do you make chess interesting? 
And we, we kind of just took the approach that it was a sports movie. It was the same thing as making a movie about football or basketball or, you know, kids, kids in sports. And we, we approached it that way. Um, and we, we also, in the teaching scenes in the classroom, we wanted it to be some, a revelation to people that this is something, because this is what happened. You know, a lot of these kids, I mean, Marcel was more advanced, but a lot of kids would see how these moves happened and these combinations and, and it would, it would change how they think. I mean, that's the whole idea of the class being called critical thinking. It would literally change their world. And, and we wanted to show that. And then in terms of the actual matches, we wanted to show real moves so that, you know, in this day and age with the internet, somebody watching the movie who, who <clears throat> may watch a game and go, oh, wait a minute, you know, they're just screwing around. They're just moving <laughs> silly pieces around. You know, people could actually watch it and go, no, they're playing a real game. And and the last game in the movie, the, the penultimate game between um, Marcel and a Copian, I think I, I, what is it? 62 moves or, or each of you was 62 moves or. Yeah, uh, it was, it was, it was, it was a long game. Yeah. Yeah. We taught, we taught the actors every move, every actual move. So every move they make in that last scene is a real move from the real game so that no one could ever say, oh, they were, you know, of course it was a movie. They faked everything. So that was very cool. And that's something John really uh, was a stickler about, not the least of which is as an actor, um, he made a wonderful director and a lot of the actors would do anything for him, literally, <laughs> literally anything, because he has such you know compassion for acting and he understands acting and he understands what actors really need. And it gave them the ability to be very natural, to do their lines, but to be very natural and um, it shows in the movie. It shows in the movie. And, and uh, it was a great experience working with him too. A really wonderful experience. I had no idea that uh, there was such a lengthy game in the movie and that the actors memorized each and every move because we chess players certainly appreciate movies when, when chess is used as a real game and uh, the king and queen are not on the wrong squares, for instance, <laughs> and some of the right. basic mistakes in, yeah. in really big production movies. So yeah. the fact that you use actual games, that, that actors learned the game by heart is something that us in the chess community will appreciate a lot. Yeah, if there was an Academy Award for chess, maybe we'll get that if we don't get the real one. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you get the real one too, but we are definitely rooting for you. And speaking of chess, I was curious if, uh, Scott, did you play chess before you started working on the movie? Or did you have any chess connection? Oh, yeah, I was very highly ranked. I was ranked higher than Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> really? No. Uh, no I, I, I would believe it. I would no, believe it. I, I knew the game and I played when I was a kid. You know, my father taught me and I, I knew how to play. I didn't really, I don't really, uh, didn't understand, you know, the the depth of it. I mean, I understand there is a, a depth to it, which I didn't really study. I didn't really pay much attention to. So I sort of reacquainted myself with all of that through the guys and, and our rehearsals. And, and uh, afterwards, when I came home from shooting, I actually, you know, had brought a board home and some other, some more pieces for my kids. And I have, you know, young kids and uh, one of them really took to it. One, you know, I have three kids, they're eight and 10. And, you know, one of them uh, really, really took to it was, was, has been playing and is pretty good, you know, and that, so it's been fun to see him develop and to have him play. Um, but, you know, I liked it. It's not like John was like laughing about it because he never really played much at all and was kind of, you know, as most people are when they sit in front of a board, you get a little nervous, you know, because, you know, you know, there's more to it than just obviously one move at a time. Um, but most of us are, are, you know, even if we're like amateur good, we think, you know, we don't think much further past a few moves. Um, but it was wonderful to see everything that went into it. And especially some of the scenes in the classroom again, how, how you know, patterns are designed. And I mean, Marcel can probably talk more about that, of course. But it was, I, I, I think it's a way of showing kids that they can do more 
there's a lot more they can do in life than, you know, play, play football or play basketball. And, you know, there's all this other stuff you can do and you can use your mind, you know, for kids that aren't going to be professional athletes, especially in inner city kids, that there's a whole world out there for them. And chess isn't just for, you know, brainy kids from the suburbs, you know, it's for every, it can be for everybody. Uh, and I think that's a great lesson of the movie. I certainly love the when in the movie, basically this is described if I recall correctly, that chess is the greatest equalizer, that it can be played by the rich and poor, it's the same number of squares, same number of pieces for every single player. Marcel, can you reflect on how chess has had an influence on your life and how do you think it helped you in your academic career and later professional career? Uh, yeah, there, there's definitely no doubt that, uh, you know, starting at an early age, um, it's improved the way you look at things, the way you rationalize things, uh, the way you apply logic into, into you know, it's, uh, it, 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 it involves a lot of skills and, um, you know, it helps you make decisions uh, maybe at a faster uh, pace because you're so trained on making decisions on the, you know, moment-to-moment -moment basis. So, I mean, it's, for me, it was, um, like I said, I, I had a little bit of a better level than the rest of the guys, but for them to see that there was more to the game than what they knew, it was amazing seeing them jump on that wagon and, and try to get better. And, I mean, back then, uh, you know, they, they weren't that great, but we became a little better every day by, you know, uh, working hard and studying more and, you know, they, they just thought that it was based on playing and playing and playing. But, you know, I have brought some old notebooks from Cuba and they were all mesmerized by it because they, they didn't think there was like nothing to do with, you know, yeah. with that. I, I, one, one of the notebooks we actually, it's a, it's a real notebook that we used in the movie, the actual one that I kept for, I don't know how many years. And it's funny because in that in that notebook, I had written down 92 games from one of the Linares tournament in which actually Judy took place, and wow. uh, you know I had I, I took it from a magazine and I had to return the magazine because there was no no computers in Cuba, so I had to write down the, all the 92 games to actually see them later uh, at my own time. Uh, so all those things are little stories that. Uh, you know, they took with them and they, they realized that there was there was a method to the madness and, and that, uh, you know, it could actually take us to the next level if we apply ourselves. And I think we did a decent job in the movie to convey that and, uh, you know, to make it, you know, to appeal to the chess players so that they don't see too many hiccups and to also, uh, to also appeal it to the, to the general masses. I think we did a decent job with that. Thank you so much for that summary, Marcel. The notebook uh, definitely is something that I'll need to tell Judith about after the recording. But uh, this this is something that I think um, you you have mentioned already how long you have been working on it. That finally, it's out there. Uh, people can watch it uh, online. Um, what, what would be the way uh, for people to, to actually watch it in the year 2020 since it's a different one and it's not... Yeah in the physical well, cinemas. Scott, uh, can you tell us more about the release and where can people watch the movie? Sure. Um, the movie has been released in the United States. Uh, it was released on September 4th, uh, predominantly video on demand with some small theatrical. So you can get it and see it on most of the major uh, sites such as Amazon or Apple and uh, there are others. Uh, I don't have them in my head, but there are others as well. If you just start looking for the movie, you know, you can find lists of the sites and it's a fee to watch it and you download it and watch it. Um, and that's really the best way to watch it right now during the pandemic. And it's pretty much the same thing overseas as well. It's played at a couple of really good film festivals like Deauville in France and uh, it's playing at two or three more. It's played at a festival in Italy and there's a few more coming up. Um, and it'll be in different, in most countries throughout Europe, especially Latin America and, you know, uh, parts of Asia uh, on video on demand, uh, you know, probably by starting in October, I would think. 
We will definitely check it out also here in Europe. Marcel, as a final question to you, what is it that the movie means to you now that your story is out there in the world, more and more people will get to know about it. Uh, you know now that it's real. What What is it that means to you and to your family that you are part of a historical movie? Well, it's a, uh, you know, um, it's, it's a small part of history, no matter how you look at it. I tend to be on the modest side and not, you know, go too crazy about that. But no matter what, I would love for like, you know, more kids to get involved with chess because it definitely has uh, helped me uh, personally and a lot of the people that I know with their everyday lives. Uh, so anything that I can do to, um, you know, to push this, uh, these kids and, uh, new people into the game, I would love to do that. Um, because it's definitely something that you cannot go through life without it, I would say. And, um, and you know, it's just an amazing, an amazing feeling to be part of that project. Uh, we love the, the end, the end of it, uh. You know, we love that, you know, the way that it's doing, everything about it. I mean, there's nothing negative uh, to say at the moment. Um, you know, just uh, very happy with it all together. And I'm just, uh, if, if it can reach uh, a few more people and get them uh, enthused about um, playing the, the Royal Game of Chess, you know, I will be, you know, super happy with that. And then the deal is done, you know, that, that's, that's all I got to say. Scott, same question to you. What does this movie mean to you? And uh, why do you think people should watch it? Well, the main reason I think people should watch it is is we need inspiration in our in our times, you know. And, you know, with the things that have gone on in this country with Black Lives Matter and, you know, the uh, finally introduction of how, you know, um, other ethnic groups have been sort of mishandled and misappropriated. It, it, there's there's no better timing for a film about a bunch of kids who are mostly from the inner city, whether they're Latino or black, that are achieving something that no one else thinks they can achieve, that that people have given up on them. And, and a story that that does that crosses all persuasions, it crosses all political lines. It's a story about hum humanity and it's something that I think is important and it's, and it's timing for me and I think for the world couldn't be better. And I think people should see it. And I think young kids can bring, get inspiration from it. Like I said about, you know, there's not something else I can do. Wow, I can do this. I'm, you know, cause kids all want to be athletes and then the ones who don't think they're very athletic, they're not sure. And, but there's this whole world that's opened up to you in your mind, to use your mind and to expand your mind. And I think that's what makes it so important. And that's what that's what's important to me too, to have this movie seen so that people understand there's all kinds of movies. There are movies where people are, you know, shooting everybody. There's movies where people are just talking to each other and playing chess, right? You know, so I want to make the kind of movies where people are, you know, enjoying each other, learning about each other from different cultures crossing cultures, better understanding and a better understanding of, you know, being human and what that means. And I'm not as interested in the other kind of movie personally, and I'd rather see this kind of movie made. And I think it's important. And I think it's really important as we move forward, you know, for the next 10 or 20 years. And it's the kind of thing I support, you know, from other filmmakers as well. Thank you so much for your moving words. We certainly hope that our viewers are now even more interested in the movie and will take the time to watch it. I know that I will with my family because it certainly is a fairy tale like story that, as you said, it was going to be fiction in your version. But in the end, together with Carla, it is based yep. on a true story. And I cannot wait to know more about it once I watch the movie. Thank you so yep. much for your time to tell us more about the insights of critical thinking. And as you guys heard, uh, do watch it on demand. It's going to be soon available in Europe as well. Thank you yep. so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Anna. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.